begin with giving our apothecary a thin coat of black primer. This provides us with a good base for our shadow. Next, we will begin highlighting our armor. We will be using Vallejo Model Color Field Blue, Games Workshop Othuan Gray, and finally, Vallejo Model Color White. We begin our first highlight by using Field Blue to slowly build up volumes on our armor. Highlights at this step can come from directly above and at 45 degree and 90 degree angles. This will give us a medium tone to add further highlights on later. We begin our second highlight with Althuan Gray to once again slowly build up contrast on our model. This time though, only spraying from directly above and at 45 degree angles relative to the model's body. Once we've established these volumes, we can now begin using a heavier flow of paint to begin bringing our apothecary's armor up to its natural white. We do this by emphasizing areas that would naturally receive more light. We use the same principles on the backpack, which we have chosen to do separately to make painting the other parts of the model easier. For our third and final highlight, we will be using pure white. We only want to hit the areas that would receive the most light here, so use this very sparingly this time, generally only spraying from directly above the model. Next, we will be giving our apothecary an oil wash in all the recesses of his armor. We will be using AK Interactive Neutral Gray Wash for this. Oil washes have two advantages over traditional acrylic washes. First, capillary action draws the wash into the recesses as we apply it, as you can see happening here. This keeps us from having to draw the wash all over our model. The enamel wash does this work for us. Second, unlike traditional acrylic washes that, once they have dried, won't easily come off, oil washes come off quite easily. So any mistakes that we might make can easily be corrected. 
We'll learn more about this in our next step. This completes our oil wash. It appears that we've made quite a mess, but we'll alleviate this in our next step. As mentioned in the previous step, oil washes can easily be cleaned up. Unlike acrylic washes, which, once dry, are almost impossible to remove. But, because we are using an oil-based wash, we need to use a solvent-based cleaner, like white spirits or mineral spirits, to remove any excess. As we can see, the mineral spirits easily remove the excess wash where mistakes were made, while leaving the wash in the recesses right where we want them. Simply dip a Q-tip in some mineral spirits and you can see how easy it is to wipe your mistakes away. Do this over the whole model and your model will look porcelain clean. There may be times where we would like to airbrush additional areas of our model with a different color, but overspray can make this difficult. The solution? It's as simple as a children's silly putty. Silly Putty, which costs as little as a single dollar, is the perfect masking tool for our miniatures. It's cheap, easily moldable, and just as easy to remove once we've finished painting our additional color. Here we have masked off our robes and we're ready for the next step. For our red robes, we'll be using Games Workshop Wazdaka Red, Evil Sun Scarlet, and Wild Rider Red. We begin our base layer by laying down a coat of Wazdaka Red. We begin our first highlight by spraying Wild Rider Red on the uppermost parts of the robe and the farthest outside edges of each fold of the robe. Use very little paint as you go, very gradually building up your highlight. Here we see our completed first highlight.
We will now add some shadows to the bottom of the robes and on the inside of the folds. We will be using Games Workshop Coralborg Crimson for this step. Use this sparingly and slowly build up your recesses with shadow. Here we have our completed recess wash. Next we will apply our second and final highlight to the robes using Wild Rider Red. Once again use a very thin down small amount of paint as you go and gradually build up your highlight. Do this on the uppermost parts of the robe and the very edges of the folds. Our robes have been shaded, highlighted, and are now complete. As you can see, we've again masked off our miniature with Silly Putty, this time to isolate the shoulder bell for painting. We will be using Wazdaka Red and Evil Sun Scarlet for this application. After our base layer of Wazdaka Red, we will now build up our highlight using Evil Sun Scarlet. Our shoulder bell is now complete. We will now paint all of the details of our apothecary using Games Workshop Blood Angels Red, Tesseract Glow, Allende Yellow, Aethermatic Blue, Reichland Flesh Shade, Agrax Earthshade, Non Oil, Retributor Armor, Skeleton Horde, Uriel Yellow, Runefang Steel, Vallejo Black Gray, Leather Brown, Ivory, and Squid Pink. We will do the black details with Vallejo Black Gray. The silver details will be done with Runefang Steel.
All of the silver parts will now be washed with non-oil. Our silver wash is now complete, giving us great contrast all along the metallic parts. All of the leather will now be painted with leather brown and washed with Agrax Earthshade. The skull will now be painted with Skeleton Horde, and the cords with Black Gray. The red and gold symbols will now be painted with Evil Sun Scarlet and Retributor Armor. All of the display details will now be painted with Aethermatic Blue, Blood Angels Red, Tesseract Glow, and Iendan Yellow.
The gene seed that the apothecary is holding will now be painted with squid pink and Reichland flesh shade. All of the details on our apothecary are now complete. 